Our next speaker is Cornelia Wyan, Professor of Medicine, Immunology, and Rheumatology at Stanford, and she's going to give us an update on giant cell arteritis. We need an update on looking at immune-mediated disease, and why do we need it? Because for about uh, 50 years, since we actually know about the existence of the immune system with its different uh, components and cells, we have believed that immune-mediated disease means there is a breakdown of tolerance, and Gary explained this so nicely, and now the immune system goes wild, and it goes wild against an antigen that lives in a certain place, and because it lives in a certain place, we have organ-specific patterning, and now we have autoimmune disease. Um, that has been the dominant uh, paradigm of how we look at immune-mediated disease. Now, like everything in life, it's probably not that easy. So um, let's look what we have learned about giant cell arteritis as an example of an immune-mediated disease and let's see what the components are and what the data are, and if we then hold it up to that paradigm, what are we left with? So giant cell arteritis is a granulomatous reaction, typically, and in most patients it is, and we utilize the patterning of that immune reaction to help us make a diagnosis. And not only does it form granulomas, it forms them in a very unique place within the walls of arteries. By saying that, you already know, and you have now defined a disease uh, that uh, separates from other vasculitides, which often, very often, have inflammation outside of the blood vessel. And if you go into a vasculitis like GPA, most of the uh, inflammation is actually has nothing to do with a blood vessel. Um, but that will not happen in GCA. GCA restricts itself to the wall of a blood vessel. So let's just take that evidence and say, so the two big players in the disease is the immune system, and the other big player in this disease are the arteries. And I will tell you, by the end of the day, they have equal weight. This is not just the immune system. This is as much the blood vessel as it is the immune system. And really, what we are witnessing when we see patients with this diagnosis is the battle royale. So how are they fighting it? Now, the contribution of the blood vessels is actually exemplified by the fact that certain blood vessels are much more likely to be affected, and we heard this about tissue tropism. So, you know, this is a PET scanning, and you take one look, and you see that there's pattering in this disease. We utilize that pattering because when we visualize vascular lesions, we depend on the fact that they are in some particular place. These are all elderly individuals. I mean, how would we know from a CTA that this lesion here is GCA, and why is this not atherosclerotic, which is a widespread disease in the elderly? Because of the place where it sits, right? Which disease would go to the end of the subclavian artery and actually lead to an occlusion of that blood vessel there? Atherosclerosis would very, very unlikely do this. And actually, I haven't seen a single cause of it. And here, of course, you see the symmetry of the disease. So this is MR angiography, and you see the symmetry of the disease, and you say, hmm, the blood vessel has a big say in what to do. What has become clear to us is that actually when the aorta is affected in this disease, one thing we need to deal with is uh, that they dissect the wall, which again emphasizes the fact that this occurs in the wall of the artery, whatever is happening. And the younger the patient is, the more likely they are going to dissect. And you see this here. This is a patient treated in 2008 for a diagnosis of polymyalgia rheumatica. She hated the idea of taking corticosteroids. She talked her doctor into treating her with low-dose uh, steroids for only six 